Welcome back everybody. We're going to jump right into the video. So in today's video, it's going to be an in-depth tutorial on how I do a highlighted platinum blonde with a root tap and a toner. And I'm also going to do a little tutorial at the end on how to get the messy beach wave curls. So as you can tell, it's been about, I don't know, eight to 10 weeks since Lexi's been here. We used to do just a foliage, but we've slowly started transitioning into more of a bold highlighted look and then we just tap her root out and tone her at the end. So getting right into the process for her hair, I section off in four quadrants. So the I section off at the ear on both sides and then I take a horizontal section across the back and right at the parietal ridge for a partial right where the head curves and then I split that in half. So there's two sections in the back and two sections in the front. So for her, I'm using Joyco Blonde Life and 15 volume in the back. I will remix when I get to the front sides and I'll probably remix 20 volume. Since we're only doing a partial, I can get through it pretty quickly and we'll pull it out, pull out the foils as needed. If I were to be doing a full on her, I would probably start off with 10 volume. Also, we're not overlapping any of the ends, so we're just breaking through that root. If I were over, overlapping the ends, I would also do um, probably just 10 volume. So as you can see, when I put the foil down, she has depth in different places. It's not really a strict highlight pattern that I stick to every time. Sometimes I'll take cert, like thicker weaves and sometimes I'll take thinner weaves. And when I say weave, I don't necessarily mean like the section size, I mean how many times I like pick up my comb and pick up a little piece of hair. So I might do like a lot of little bitty weaves or I might just do three chunkier weaves just depending on how I want it to look. The more you alternate your weave, then the more depth you'll have and it won't really look so um, solid, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I just kind of switch it up. Always make your sections super thin. That's one thing that I felt like I used to struggle with is I thought I was making my sections thin but I really wasn't and so now I've thinned them out so much and I can tell a much bigger difference in the way that my foils lift and just how they look. So if you think you're taking a thin section then take an even thinner one. That's my advice. So I'm just going to let y'all finish watching me foil this little quadrant and then I will hop back on here when I get around to the front and I'll kind of talk you through how I do the front hairline. So going in the front, I'll start on the sides first and do a couple foils right at the hairline. I always do these on an angle going up the head, kind of how the hair lays. So you want to make these really, really close to the head and really, really thin because when they pull their hair back, you don't want it to look chunky or stroppy. I've really noticed that going off an angle a little bit really, really helps. First off, it helps my foil be really tight and it helps it blend super well if they ever pull their hair up. So I normally will do just a few of these on the side and then I'll move to the very front right at her hairline where her little money piece would be and I make sure to do that 
um, after I do the sides because once I start getting higher up on the head, it's hard for me to get those money pieces as um, close to the scalp as I want when there's a bunch of foil in the way. Always make sure as well when you're doing the highlights, if you've got like a little bleeder or something that you think could turn into a bleeder, just go ahead and wipe that away or pull your foil down a little bit because if you think it could happen, it's probably going to happen. Um, folding my foil up underneath my comb like I do really, really helps prevent that. I mean, occasionally, you know, a bleeder is still very possible no matter how careful you are. So the things that have helped me is folding my foil differently, like what I'm showing you right now, flipping that little tab underneath and kind of pressing it up to the scalp. That gets the foil really tight under there. And then also keeping the bleach just a little bit away from the very end of the foil. Like I know that's probably common sense, but when you keep it just maybe like, I don't know, a little centimeter away from the foil. Um, each bleach is different. Some bleaches swell more than others. So I kind of know how Blonde Life works. I've used it for about two years now and it doesn't swell that much. So I still have to get it pretty close to the root, but definitely not all the way. So I'll kind of foil the sides up until I was trying to fix my camera for you guys. I was trying to keep the best angle at all times, but I'll try to foil up until I get close to the money piece. So as you can see, I'm about to start taking a slice and it would end up going kind of in the money piece. I've tried doing just the front first, but then I feel like when I do that, the little pieces right at the sides by the ear, I can't really reach them as well as I would like because we've got the foil in the back and then we've also got the foil in the front kind of messing with us. So if I do the sides first and work my way up until I get to the front and then I'll do the front and then I'll go back to the side and finish up the very top. That just seems to work well for me. I know some people completely foil the whole hairline and then go in. Um, maybe for a foliage, you know, that would probably work. I've done that before, but when I'm wanting, you know, a full highlighted look everywhere, I just like this technique a little bit better. So for the money piece, I pretty much just take super, super fine weaves right in the front. Sometimes I'll go off an angle. Sometimes I'll go straight on. As you can see, this is where she normally parts. So I'm going to do this side. And then when I move to the other side, I'll do that portion of the money piece. But take these sections even thinner than your other ones. So go super, super thin and pack it in. So I'll usually do about three sometimes four really thin weaves back to back to back right up here just to kind of make the front pop a little bit more you can do slices if you want to sometimes i do slices it just really depends on how i'm feeling that day you could also kind of do them at an angle i know i talked about that in one of my other videos i think it was on instagram how i do that more for um foliages kind of do it at an angle and the money piece just kind of comes together at a point right in the front but for this, where she's going to be fully blonde everywhere else, I'm just packing these in pretty tightly, horizontally, right in the front. So it'll really, really pop. Okay, and now we're going back to the front. So as you can see, everything lines up a lot better this way. And I'm able to get to all of the hair and keep it really close to the scalp. There's really not anything in my way. So that helps out a lot. And now I'll just finish up the top just like I did the rest. I kind of go off of an angle right now. And then I'll straighten it up a little bit and end up horizontally with the part once I get more towards the top. So you'll see that as I continue foiling.
Also, I hope I'm not boring y'all to death with foiling, but I know I always want to see really long hair videos. I just love long videos, and foiling is just so therapeutic to me, and I know it probably is for some of y'all too, so hopefully you enjoy watching me foil for 30 minutes, but if you don't, then just let me know, and I'll be sure to cut it out a little bit next time. I just wanted you all to see the full effect. Okay, so she processed for probably 30 minutes or so. And since I used 15 volume on the back, I just let that sit the full time. I checked them periodically and um, tested elasticity. I love doing that. I always will test the elasticity as they're processing just to make sure that the hair stays healthy because if for some reason it's not, we need to rinse that immediately. So I did tease um, a little bit of her ends. I didn't get that on film, but as you can see right here, it looks kind of matted. Um, I kind of just took some of her ends that were left out of the foil and teased them and just painted a little bit on just to brighten them up just a tad. I do love doing that, but it just creates a tangled mess. So that's kind of annoying, but it does make a pretty blonde and it's a little bit easier on the ends. So as you can see, she lifted so good right around the front, a little foil pulling action for you. It lifted very evenly and those front pieces will really pop how they're so packed together. Okay, so y'all all know how to wash hair, but once again, I wanted to show y'all every step. So, since I knew I was going to be toning her, I won't condition the hair because I do feel like the conditioner kind of acts as a barrier. So I shampoo two times just to get all the product out. I think the first time I just used the Biolage Fiber Strong just to kind of break up all the bleach, make sure it's really clean. And then I went in with the Kevin Murphy Hydrate Shampoo. So like I said, I do not use conditioner, just shampoo only. But do make sure you get all of that product out. And I try to detangle just a little bit as I'm shampooing. But you'll see when I'm brushing her out, um, just using a wet brush and some product will um, make it really easy to get all of the tangles out. So you don't really need conditioner, not when you're about to tone. That's just my opinion. Okay, so I take all my clients back to my chair to tap and tone them because I can't see what I'm doing in the back of a shampoo bowl. I just feel like it's not even and it always just ends up like a hot mess. So I'll take them back to my chair and I use the Amica Wizard to spray on their hair and brush them out. That thing is a lifesaver. Also using a wet brush helps a ton. I just start at the ends and work my way up and it always, everyone's hair always brushes out perfectly for me. So here's a little shot before we tone. So she honestly doesn't need a root tap because they blend really well. Okay, so I mixed up an 8N and a 7V in Shades EQ. I'm awful and I don't really measure. I just kind of go off looks and it always works out. Sometimes I measure if it's like very important, but for stuff like this, it's not that bad. So just mix that up until it's a gel consistency. I don't want an actual root. I just want to blend out any highlight lines if there are any just so that she has a little bit easier of a grow out when her hair starts to fade. So we'll take that back and we will start the root tap process. So like I said, her highlights look amazing. They lifted so well and it's super blended. So she really doesn't have to have a root tap if I didn't want to, but we both like doing that just because it makes it a lot easier and the line is a little less harsh once it starts growing out. So I literally just tap the root, just like it says. I will take little sections and barely tap right where the foil was. Don't bring it down far unless you actually want a root. For her, like I said, we don't want a root, so just tap right there, right at the scalp. I do leave her front pieces out and I do not tone them. Not for her since she wants to be pretty bright.
So I let the root sit on about five minutes and then I went and mixed up Shades EQ, 10VV, and 9P, and a little bit of clear. And now I just take a little applicator bottle and put that all over the hair and I comb it through with my wow comb. I do like to do this because I want the root to blend in just a little bit. And um, if you don't want the root to blend though, you can go ahead and take them to the shampoo bowl, rinse the root shade out, and then apply the end toner. It takes a little bit of extra time, but if you don't want that root to come down a little bit as you're toning, then that would be the best option for you. I leave the money pieces out and I just put purple shampoo on them. So this only works obviously if they lifted super evenly and super bright, but for her, she always does. And that's what I like to do for the front. So now that I've shampooed her toner out, we're just gonna go in and trim up her length. We just do a blunt cut and we usually take about an inch, inch and a half off every time, just a good healthy cut. And she actually had hair down to her butt when she first started coming to me probably about two years ago, we first cut about 10 inches off and then we have slowly went blonder and blonder and we have slowly worked our way up to a little cute blunt cut and she loves it short. She will never go back. So I just finished up cutting and then I will start to blow dry. So I know everyone probably has their own products they like to use, but for me, I like to use the Kenra um, Root Lift Spray first, and then I take a little bit of Olaplex number, I think this is number six, the Bond Smoother, and I put that on the ends, and then I will blow dry. I love giving blowouts. Normally, I will blow out every client. Even if I'm going to curl it after, I'll still use the round brush and make it really straight and give them lots of volume. So I have the Bioionic um, blow dryer and I love it so much. And then my favorite round brushes are Olivia Garden. I have like the super mega size one and it is my absolute favorite. So I highly recommend investing in that if you like to round brush people. So once she's nice and blown out, I will use the Kevin Murphy Bedroom Hair Texture Spray just to spray on there and like, like it says, give it a little bit of texture. And this really just helps create that super messy look. You can get, you don't have to use this, but it's just a little added bonus. So I use a one inch curling iron. This is the Babyliss one inch iron. The one inch is definitely my favorite size because I feel like it gives the best little messy curl. So my first tip is to not section the hair. So don't section it off from top to bottom, from side to side. Just leave it all down and go in. I will start at the front and as you can see, I keep the curling iron at the root at all times. So I don't clamp it, pull the curling iron down to the ends and then roll it up. I clamp it at the root and keep it at the root. You'll just work the hair up with your curling iron and that's gonna help you always have volume right there at the root. It's gonna make it to where you don't have the curl just on the ends, you'll have it pretty much everywhere. Also, you wanna keep your ends out. So you wanna leave about an inch to two inches of your ends out, just depending on how messy you want it. The messier you want it, the more ends you're gonna leave out. And as I am letting it go, I will kinda of twist my curling iron. It's kinda of hard to explain, I'll just kinda of twist my wrist with the curling iron and also pull at the same time. So I don't normally let my clamp out all the way as I'm letting the hair go. I'll kind of keep it in the hair and tug on it a little bit so that those ends stay pretty straight as I'm letting it go. So I can tell that really helps to create a messy look as well.
Does anyone else feel like they're always on the phone as a hairstylist? I do booth rent, so I do not have a front desk person to book my appointments. I do it all myself, and I feel like I am constantly on my phone. So once it's curled, I'll just take my fingers and brush through it and it creates the most beautiful curl. I love, love, love how this curl and iron works and just this whole technique, leaving the ends out, it just helps create like the perfect Pinterest hair, especially with her little haircut. I just think it looks so cute. So always make sure to like give your clients volume, you know, like spice it up for them, make them feel pretty. You know that they love that. That's like the best part about getting your hair done is just doing it a little bit different than what you're used to. So here's a little look at her root. Everything is blended so well. And as you can see, those front little pieces are still super bright, even though we only purple shampooed them. It kind of makes them stand out a little more than the rest because I do feel like going ashy sometimes makes your color darker. So keeping the little bit of that yellow tone in the front really helps make it pop. So once again, here is her before, and then I will show you her after outside in the natural lot. Woohoo, it looks so pretty. So blended and so bright and so blonde. We got rid of all those roots, and she's feeling back to herself. Okay, guys, that is going to be it for the video. Thank you so, so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope throughout all my yapping, you learned something from this video. Please leave me a comment on what you would like to see and if you learned something from today. Thank you once again so much for watching.